Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Um, as you know by the title, today we are going to be going through my entire Anthurium collection. This has been probably the most requested video this year and I haven't done it because honestly it feels like a little bit overwhelming. It feels like a very daunting task. I did do an Anthurium tour last year and I had so much less Anthurium than I do now. I feel like today, today, this year I acquired so many and I have shown them in this and that video, but I figure I kind of just want to show you guys who is on the roster, who is in the entire collection now. Um, and then at least I have like a baseline to, to compare it to for next year. So, okay, a uh, few things. If you watched, I, I originally wanted to structure this like I did my Ripsalis video. If you didn't watch that one, I did a Ripsalis collection care q a and wishlist video and i wanted to do that with the anthurium but i had 10 rips alice and i have over 60 anthurium so that's just not going to work so today i'm just going to take you through who's in the collection and then next week um, i'm going to do a repot and chat q a all anthurium questions and then i will take you through my anthurium wishlist so it's kind of going to be like a part one and two situation second thing is somebody slacked off today i'm not going to point any fingers but someone slacked off today got a late start so i probably have like a solid hour hour and a half at most out here to get through the collection or to get through the anthurium here before it starts to get dark and then we're gonna head into the plant room by the end of this video to go through the Ethereum in there. So I'm just gonna get started. I'm really not gonna go in depth too much about each one, when I acquired it, where it came from, the history, what I've struggled with. I really just kind of wanna show you like who I have, show you some cool features of the plant, maybe give a little bit of a backstory on the plant but um i want this to i want this video to be under two hours if i can do an under two hour video i would be so happy so i'm just going to start on the shelf and we're just going to whip through them the first one is actually going to be two plants so which one do i show you first so this is my anthurium ra5 swamp bunny i got this one from amanda last year this year i can't remember when but um this is the first one she sent me and it's looking pretty okay right now but i struggled with this plant so much i don't know what it is but i kept having leaves melt i kept having aborted leaves whether it turned crunchy or just literally turned into nothing and um, i finally got so tired of it i just chopped it back down to a stump it sat in i think my millsbo or my tent for months until i finally got a leaf which was this one and you know you can kind of see it's a little beaten up it's a little bruised but then the second and third one came out and now it's kind of looking a little bit better but she she definitely has a lot of cosmetic damage and things like that but i will say that i freaking adore this leaf it is just so like dark like the i know that i have a lot of dark leaf velvet and therium but the color of this is a little different. It's like a mossy, a mossy green rather than just like a green green or like, you know, how some Anthurium have like that bluish green. This one is a very like dark and moody moss green. That's all I can really say. So um, Amanda knew that I was struggling with this plant. So she just so generously sent me a second one. Same exact plant I have had. Okay, there's a fungus net. Nope. I've had so much better luck with this one in terms of leaves that look normal, leaves not aborting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> leaves not aborting. Um, but this one looks very, very pap. Like if you compare it to the original one, like I would think that these are different plants. I know that they have similarities, but I don't know, they look, ugh, they look really different to me, but they're both so beautiful. The color is very different between them. Sinus is a little bit tighter on the original one. Uh, Venation is the same. Sinus is about the same, but I don't know. It's 
it kind of feels like I have two different plants now. So I'm very happy to have these. It's been really fun to grow. I'm growing this, I'm actually growing 90% of my Anthurium now with drainage holes. I've talked about why I've done, I've chosen to do that and I will talk about that a little bit more in my repot and chat video. So yeah, these two have been moved. Um, both of them are in a tree fern fiber soil mix and they freaking love it. That is just like the magic mix. You get some of the nicest, juiciest, delectable roots ever. So yeah, these are not doing too bad. I feel like I'm on the mend now with this one. This one is just tooting along. This is a, a newer leaf, not a huge size growth difference, but I'm just happy to see growth at all. This one is a Carla Bevep Antalakii. I got this one for my birthday this year from Amanda, from Lauren, Alice. It was kind of like a group effort to get this here. And I am I honestly am still blown away that I have it. I think this is probably one of the most beautiful Anthurium I have ever seen. Unfortunately, I have not had any new growth on it yet, but the Cataphil is swelling up. It's popped out of this little old sheath here, and so I know there is a leaf on the way, and I'm hoping to have one around this size, if not a little bit bigger, I would be so happy. Like this venation and this sinus, it's, it's like, I, I just can't explain it. Sometimes like the most simple, I guess, design of Anthurium is just the best. And I like that it has sort of like a, kind of a, orangey pinkish tint to the venation it's not just like pure white it's not silver um it's just got like this yummy yummy sort of sunrise lemonadey color and even on the back seals um you can see it's like a bright red and it's just so beautiful so i've seen a few specimens not from this exact cutting or this exact plant but online through and some with friends and it seems like it kind of has the tendency to kind of push its ears backward and just kind of fall flat back um so i'm hoping that mine can stay flat because i don't i don't really love what Anthurium does that um i think there are some in some cases where it can be kind of quirky and cute but for this one specifically i would love to just have like a nice flat leaf so I can enjoy the shape of this um, shape of the leaf I can enjoy the venation and yeah anyway the color of this anthurium is just wild I, I feel like if non plant people saw this entire collection like my husband for example he'd probably be like they all look the same like what do you mean this color is different but it's different it's got like the bluish blackish undertone and it has like that, um, what is that? Like sort of holographic, shimmery reflect. I, I'm not the best person at explaining things like that, but um, this one, if you guys are looking for a plant to invest in, I feel like this would probably be one of my number ones. And if you can buy a clone of it, meaning a cutting, um, of a plant, a specific plant you like, I would get that one because, you know, if you get it from like a seedling batch or something, it's going to be very variable. Of course, both parents are just Gorgina, so I think no matter what, you're going to get a really, really cool Anthurium. But my suggestion would try and find, to, to be to try and find a clone if you can. So this is one that I am just like so anxious for. When I get a new leaf, I'm like literally going to be on leaf watch. Every single day, I want to document the growth. I'm excited to see like what it looks like just as a emergent right out of the cataphyll up until the moment that it hardens off. I'm just so stoked. So yeah, anyway, this one also in uh, drainage, it's got LECA down at the bottom and it's in a mix of tree fern fiber and soil. The next one has been kind of one of my problem children. So there's a, a few, I have about a handful of rehab anthuriums that I'm not gonna be showing you. I'll show you a picture of what they look like. I almost added this to the list just because it's really nothing, it's really nothing to look at right now. If you guys remember, this one was a victim to the silica overload debacle. Um, that's when it was in a pot with drainage. So it's just on the mend 
and um, I have since then moved it to a pot with drainage. It's in pond and it's just, it's just recovering. This one used to have about three, actually it used to have about four leaves that, but the, you know, the older leaves were much smaller. I just, I just chopped them off. You can see how much the, uh, the catafil is swelling. So there is a leaf coming out, but I'm also noticing that there is also an inflow coming in too. So I don't know. This thing wants to flower and push a leaf at the same time. And honestly, like, usually I'd be like, get it girl, like, you know, follow your dreams. But for how poorly it's been doing and not, it hasn't really been giving me very nice leaves. I'm like, do you really think that you can do both at the same time? I don't know. I might chop the, uh, the inflow off because it would be the first one um, since I've had this plant. And usually the first one is very, very weak and you don't really want to um, pollinate it or do anything. I mean, that's not like a general rule of thumb, I don't think, but definitely with me and my friends, we tend to not really do anything with the first inflow that comes out. I'm more concerned about having leaves because it is a very beautiful hybrid. Oh, by the way, I didn't even tell you what this is. This is a Mag Crystal Lux. It looks very similar to a lot of the Lux hybrids out there. Honestly, if it didn't have the tag, I would not know who it is, but it is very beautiful when it is nice. Um, I like these little perfectly overlapping lobes. I like, ugh, I like the subtle venation. I like the roundness of it, pebbliness of it. It's not as pebbly as some of my other mat or some of my other Lux hybrids but um, it's still very, very cute. So anyway, quick little feature on this one. I honestly wasn't even gonna show it, but since we're already here, this is what it looks like now. So hopefully um, the next time you see it, it actually has like a nice looking leaf. All right, we're gonna do two of these at the same time. If you watched Alice's last collab that we did together, you would have seen this plant. So this is one of two Politiflorum that I have. Um, the reason that I have two is because I ordered one during the last pop-up, not the last, like the, a pop-up that Lauren did with Tropicals Plants earlier this year. It was maybe back in March or April or something. My original Politiflorum was just not acting very nice and was being kind of mean to me. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a backup. And to my surprise, it ended up being, it's not called a Politiflorum Narrow, but this is a Politiflorum Narrow. And all of the Politiflorums that came out of that batch or that was sent to Lauren during that show were all just so, so, so skinny and narrow. I wanna show you the oldest leaf on it. it. Hasn't dropped any leaves since import, but like, look at that. To me, this does not look like, I don't know, I feel, you know when you grow like, strappy or strap leaf anthurium from stick or you grow it from a very small plant it has almost like round leaves you know what i have an example for you i'm just going to show it i wasn't going to show you this till later but this is my anthurium strappy velvety from woohoo plants such a cool it's such a cool anthurium i'm going to plug in what the uh a mature plant looks like and i'm just so happy to have this but like if you look at some of the older leaves on it. It's like, you know how it kind of starts very round, like you can't even really tell that it's gonna be a strap leaf anthurium. That's sort of what I expected on a plant that young, but like if you compare that to this little, this little guy, it's like he wanted to be big. It's like you took a big politiflorum and then just like shrunk it down or something. So. Anyway, really, really cool. And I just, yeah, again, I love how narrow and just, it, look at this. This this is crazy. This is insane. And it holds on to so many leaves. Like I literally have not lost one leaf since import. Such a strong plant. Um, I don't know if I showed this to you already, but this is the latest leaf on it. It jumped in size. I don't know what the difference is because I've been acclimatizing it in this since I got it. Um, and I do think I'm gonna upsize it pretty soon. And then I've got a new leaf right here and this literally just opened up and I think it's gonna be humongous. I wouldn't doubt if it's like maybe double this size, I would be so happy. But to compare it to my original Politiflorum, like look how much thicker this is. 
I would say that like they're about the same maturity size. Like if you look at the last two leaves, they're about the same size, but one is just so much narrower and sharper. And it's like the, the midrib, it protrudes so much more than the original Politiflorum. So let me give you sort of a peek at this one. Um, I still love this one very much, still very beautiful. This one is still hardening off. This is the newest leaf on it. Um, but yeah, you could just tell it's a lot, it's a lot thicker. Well, maybe not a lot, but it's, it's significantly thicker than that one. So I'm very, very happy to have both of these. I do think, I do think this is my favorite strap leaf and Therium still. I think it would have been a very close toss up between this and the Wenli because of how much I love the emergent Wenlingeri leaf but um, I have always just had such a fondness for the Politiflorum. Also something that Alice noticed yesterday was that this one has a bit more shine than like your typical Politiflorum. You can't really tell in this lighting because it's so dark right now, but it has such an incredible shine to it that I haven't seen on this Politiflorum before not on Alice's Politiflorum. So this one is just very special to me and I love looking at it. It just, the cutest little thing. I know she's really small right now, but I have big dreams for her. I don't really know what the plan is in terms of the pot because this is one, but you'll notice that both of my pallies are still with no drainage and they've been doing, they've been doing good. They've been doing okay. And so I'm like, do I even want to move it to no drainage? I don't know but um, I'm gonna have to think about it. But this one is also in a mix of tree fern fiber and soil, lots of bark in here. And I actually don't, I actually don't think that I have any tree fern fiber in this one. I think this one is a mixture of moss, like chopped up moss, soil, and maybe a little bit of like cocoa, cocoa husk. But yeah, my, my little pally gang. Very, very cute. It is getting dark so much faster than I thought. Sunset's not supposed to be till 4.30 and it's only 2.30 and it's already getting freaking dark. So, anywho, next one is my Anthurium Vici Super Narrow. Unfortunately, um, this one has not had much traction or growth since I've gotten it, but I have heard this can be a notoriously slow grower and I believe it because it like this is the only leaf that I have grown and from the time that it emerged, fully emerged from the catafil and hardened off, I am not joking, it took about a month like a whole month for it to just like fully expand and harden. I guess it's just slow in every way, at least that's been my opinion. And I've been, I grew this for like the first few months inside of a greenhouse, thinking it would kind of speed things up, but hasn't really been the case. Um, anyway, this is one of the import leaves. It did have another import leaf on it, which uh, yellowed off and I cut off this not really sure what this is about it didn't have this when i imported it and it just kind of started to melt luckily this one is totally fine and it's actually been so much easier than i thought it was going to be i don't know why i always kind of thought that this one would be a very finicky plant or one that would never want to live outside of a greenhouse but the leaves are actually pretty like they're thick and they're sturdy and they actually do fine in um, ambient conditions. I actually think that it's been liking less light and less warmth. I kind of feel like this might have something to do with the humidity and the warmth in the exo that it was in. But yeah, this one so far is just like pristine. And I just love, love, love the ribbing on this. So some people have asked me, not some people, like literally two people have asked me what the difference is between the Anthurium Vici Narrow and then the Anthurium Vici Super Narrow. So I think I've seen one narrow and uh, the difference that I saw is that there's not as many ribs as the Super Narrow and the venation doesn't go all the way to the edge of this midrib, or not midrib, leaf margin, so the edge of the leaf. But the leaf itself 
is still narrow. I prefer the super narrow because I feel like even as a small plant, you kind of get that effect of a really big, long, mature vichii. And yeah, it, it, I think it's just really cool. And it's kind of crazy to think that I hated, like literally hated this plant at one point. I thought it was really creepy. It grossed me out, but influencing got me. My friends who own this, seeing it on socials, I was like, you know what? It's actually really cool. And now that I actually have it, I'm like, it's such a textural plant too. And if you guys know me, you know that I buy plants not only for the way they look, but for the way they feel. I'm a very touchy feely kind of person. And so when I have a plant that kind of like scratches both of those things, it's just like a win-win for me. Um, yeah, so that is my Vichie, Vichie, <laughs> Vichie thus far. I'm pretty sure this has drainage holes. Oh yeah, it does. I poked some holes down at the bottom. This one is um, in a mix of tree fern fiber, soil. I've got moss up top and leka down at the bottom. Not a ton of roots, to be honest. Like, I would think by now that this would have taken over the root or taken over the pot. I can see some down here, but I think I was talking to Amanda. I was talking to someone about the VCI and they were just saying how it's not a very rooty plant or it doesn't root as vigorously as some other anthurium, but I'm not worried about it. The plant is growing fine. It hasn't declined anymore since this kind of happened in the EXO. Doing great out here, so I'm not gonna fuss with it. The next two are not rare or highly sought after anthurium at all, but it's one of my favorites to talk about. And that is because it's the first anthurium that I ever created myself from seed. And that is the anthurium crystal mag for Getty Eye. Actually, let me go get the father. I no longer have um, the crystal mag. It just got so big and I was getting overwhelmed and I just got rid of the whole thing. But this is the pollen parent. Not quite an anthurium for Getty Eye dark what I would consider a dark, but like dark-ish. So it's not like the silver venation. It's kind of got like that greenish neon venation, but just not as dark as some of the other like really, really dark anthurium that I've seen. And this is what you get. Um, I do have another one that I'm gonna show you as comparison, but this one was the strongest seed out of the entire seed batch, which is why I kept it. And it's very interesting because now that I'm like, now that it's bigger and I'm looking at it more, to me, this looks more like a... I can see for some reason, and I know maybe people won't agree with it, but for some reason I kind of see crystallinum a little bit, like, not crystallinum, obviously crystallinum. Clarinervium. I see a little bit of clarinervium. Like, I would think that maybe it's like a crystal mag clarinervium for Getty Eye Hybrid or something. Um, just because the venation doesn't quite strike me so much as Crystal Mag, neither does it really strike me so much as Forgetty Eye. It just kind of looks like a complex hybrid or something, but it's so cute and I just love, love how round these leaves are. I love how kind of like funnily, funnily, how weirdo the sinus is. It's kind of like partially few sometimes, sometimes it's fully open. Kind of just does whatever it wants to do. And then let me show you another one that came out of that batch. You've seen this one not too long ago. And this is my favorite one that came out of that batch. And I'm so, ex I'm so happy that I kept it because I actually almost sold it. But I love how dark these leaves are. They're pretty much as dark as the Forgetty Eye and has similar venation color in that it's very neon, like that neon green and not as silver as this one, which is very dry. I need to water this one. Like this one is way silvery than that one. And I love how pebbly it is. Like it's just so pebbly and turtle-like and the emergent leaf is just so special. My other one does have uh, a burgundy emergent leaf as well, but not quite as like dark as this one. And then this one also kind of does the funny thing where sometimes it has a sinus, sometimes it doesn't, um, but this one is a little bit more open than the other one. I would have repotted this on camera sometime last month. And when I tell you guys that Anthurium 
freaking love tree fern fiber soil plus myco it's incredible like i literally just repotted this and i'm going to be repotting it again because one of these dang roots has found its its way out of the hole and i don't want to lose it it's starting to wrap around the bottom i have never actually had an anthurium take over a pot so fast but that's just the magic mix you know it's just it's just magical so this one is very happy and has been living totally fine in ambient conditions it hasn't really lived in a greenhouse in a very in a very long time since it was a seedling but i would say that like you know i have a lot of really cool anthurium in my collection but this one is very special to me and i love it a lot if i could only choose to keep one or the other one i think you guys might tell already that I'd probably keep this one. Next one up is one that I got from Woohoo Plants in our me and Alice's little unboxing collab. So this is a Woohoo One, so an Anthurium Pap Woohoo One uh, crossed with an Antalachiae Bvep. This one is the newest leaf in my care before this leaf was this one. So we, we had a pretty decent size growth considering it's in a really, really tiny pot and looks like it's already busting out of here and ready for another one so this is one that i'm going to be repotting as well but um i have noticed that this one is yellowing down at the tip and i'm not sure if it's from it drying out there's one time where i let it dry out in my tent um or i don't know if it's a fertilization thing like i put too much too much calmag or something but um either way we're i'm seeing a little bit of cosmetic damage on this but i'm just happy honestly i'm happy that i have a leaf that is fully formed doesn't look mangled came out of the sheath just fine and she's a thing of beauty she kind of gives me ace of spades vibes in terms of the leaf shape and the leaf color and also just like the texture of this leaf i'm getting very ace also with the back the red venation on these little ridges so beautiful and i've got a new leaf on the way so that is super super exciting this one is another favorite in my collection so you know i love a good dark velvety anthurium but i also really like the ones that just kind of like make a statement and stand out between all the dark ones and this one has been the perfect perfect addition so this is an anthurium um brielle it's actually a dock block plant and is likely some sort of like crystallinum hybrid like he would have taken different crystallinum in his collection and breeded them to create this and it's so so beautiful uh one thing that they've noted about this plant is that because it's like an understory landscape plant it does push out offsets more frequently than your typical anthurium and i've actually found that to be true because i've already had two offsets on this plant since i've had it and like not only does it push new leaves on the main growth but it'll just randomly push little little babies here and there um so that's been kind of nice I also noticed yesterday that it's pushing an inflow. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to do anything with the pollen or if I'm going to make it a mother, but I really like how this is growing and so I'm kind of hesitant to mother it and have it produce seed because I'm finally seeing some like decent size growth and this leaf grew on this shelf pretty much completely unscathed. We have a little bit of cosmetic damage, but this is not bad for growing in ambient conditions. Basically getting, on a day like this, it's getting like 20 foot candles. Humidity is like anywhere from like 35 to 40%. And yeah, she's a, she's a freaking champ. I'm trying to show, I'm trying to show duplicates at the same time. So next one I'm gonna show you is my Anthurium One Lingerai from Alice. She gave this to me as a teeny tiny little baby. I believe, I believe this is the original leaf. I don't think I had one before that. And now we are here. So it's been very a very slow progression of growth, but um, I'm kind of happy where we're headed. It's really interesting. I don't know if I'm gonna have a picture. Either I might have a picture or I'll put in one of Alice's pictures. When this new leaf emerged, and I hadn't noticed it for any of these other leaves, it was like a bright, fiery, reddish pink. And I was like, that's not, 
that's not right for Winlingeri because you know the Winlingeri is known for having that beautiful, beautiful coppery brown emergent leaf. Um, but it was kind of cool. So anyway, it was like that reddish pink color for maybe like three, three or four days, and then it eventually went copper, and now it's full, it's about fully hardened now. But pretty decent size growth since I've gotten it. Alice's is freaking huge. Hers is about as big as, maybe bigger now, than my original Winlingeri that I got from Amanda. This one has been very, very slow growing. I don't know if it's because it's always lived on this shelf. It lived in a greenhouse for the first, I wanna say like two months that I had it. And then eventually I just took it out. It's funny because this leaf, this leaf actually grew I can't remember if this leaf grew in the greenhouse. I think it might have, or maybe it was on this shelf, but it was all like weird. So um, there was a leaf that came before this one that I chopped off and it was like a corkscrew. It looked like it's inflow and it was just so annoying. So yeah, I chopped it off, but this is the newest one that came out. Not a huge size difference between this one and the last leaf, but I was happy to at least see a leaf that was flat the only, like, I guess least common denominator between growing this leaf and this leaf was that I always made sure that it had water when this one was growing out. This one grew in a different vessel. It was much smaller and it would dry out so fast. And so I do think that this is maybe a mixture of just acclimatizing to lower conditions and then maybe just having a lack of water. I don't know you guys. It's all speculation at this point, but either way, very happy to have this one. This one definitely pushes like that typical coppery brown, beautiful buttery um, emergent leaf. And I really wish I could have more leaves more often, but this one is just stingy. She really makes you work for it. Oh, there's a fungus snap, that's good. She really makes you work for it, but you know, it's fine. We enjoy the growth that we have, and she's already a really, really great size, so I, I'm not, I'm honestly not in any rush. Here's an exciting one. I'm very scared to be handling this. I'm not gonna lie, because I've got a precious, ooh, I've got a precious little inflow here that is getting very, very heavy, and I'm scared that it's gonna snap before these berries can ripen. So anyway, this is my indo Pappy hybrid um i've had this for a pretty long time i think i got this in 2021 maybe 2021 but yeah it kind of just has your typical sort of pappy look long long um sort of narrowish leaves that green neon venation this one actually pushed an offset so down here, I have a totally separate plant. This leaf and this leaf is from a totally separate growth point. I was gonna separate it, but then this started coming out and I was scared to touch, like I was scared to mess with it. Um, if you're wondering what I pollinated it with, I used the Forgetti Eye pollen um, that I used for... Guys, I lied to you. I lied to you, I got confused. So with my hybrid that I made, remember I showed you two of them that I have, I didn't use that pollen. That's not the pollen I used. I used the pollen from an actual dark forgetty eye, like a dark, dark forgetty eye from my friend JR. I can't believe that I talked about that for so long, like with my whole chest so confidently. Yeah, so uh, wrong pollen, wrong wrong parent. The forgetty eye that I showed you earlier saying that that was the, the pollen donor was actually the pollen donor for this one. So I guess Indopappy hybrid slash darkish forgetty eye. To be honest, I don't, I don't think unless I get some cool mutation from one of these seeds, I don't think it's gonna be like the most exciting um, hybrid ever because I would say the forgetty eye already kind of had like shares similar features to this plant in terms of the leaf color the venation color so I'm still curious to see what it's gonna look like you know sometimes like how I showed you my super super dark pebbly seed that came out of that batch like you can still get some really exciting ones sometimes you can get variegated ones 
So I just, you know, I didn't want to waste the pollen. I didn't want to waste this inflow since it was a good size and that was the only pollen that I had. Anyway, I'm still excited regardless. Um, but yeah, this one has been shaping up pretty well. I've got a little bit of cosmetic damage just from, I guess, just growing in lower conditions. This one is still in a pot without drainage. I do 100% plan on upsizing this pot and moving it to a pot with drainage, but I'm not doing nothing until these berries form. And I'm very excited to harvest them. I haven't done anthurium uh, berry collecting and germinating in a while. And so I'm excited to kind of take you guys through that process on YouTube. But yeah, not doing too bad. Tooting along here. I feel like it looks bright in the viewfinder, but it is so dark out here. It looks like it's like nighttime already. So, um, okay, next one, not super, super exciting. This is another plant from Bunny, one of her original hybrids. This is a anthurium crystallinum luxuriens. This is, I don't know what it is, Alice, she has seeds from the same batch and I think they were seeds. I don't think that she sent us clones. Did she? Because they were kind of big. No, they were probably seeds from her batch and she just sent us like really mature ones. Anyway, she has, you know, the same, she has this plant. I think she has this plant and hers is growing just fine. Mine has just always kind of grown like baloney, like poo poo caca. And the damage that you're actually seeing is from spider mites. This one got hit so bad. This one must taste so delicious because I was shocked and appalled and disgusted at the amount of spider mites I found on this thing. It had like its own colony. But to be honest, for how many spider mites there were on that plant, the damage isn't like crazy bad. And I do think that is a product of myco because myco is supposed to make your plants more um, resilient and more resistant to pests and i have noticed that my plants that had spider mites really bad the damage didn't show up right away and when it did it wasn't like as bad as it normally would be anyway going off on a tangent here it's not like the worst ever like they're still decent ish size leaves but for as long as i've had this thing this should have been this should have been flowering size by now i haven't even moved to catafils yet no catafil in sight we're still in the petiolar sheath phase and yeah just i have not been the, the best at growing this and i also noticed that i've been growing them lopsided same with my i have another lux hybrid that like one side of the leaf is always like smaller than the other like you can see how uneven it is, this one maybe looks a little bit more normal, but this side is smaller than this side. Um, and then this is another plant that got hit bad during silica, sil silica apocalypse, silica, silica apocalypse. I did move this one to drainage holes. I'm not seeing a whole lot of root action, which is not wonderful because I kind of moved it a while ago. I feel like this has been in here for like three months and I don't see any new any new uh, roots and it's in a tree fern fiber soil mix, which is kind of like my go-to. So if that doesn't work for this, I don't know what it wants, but I would think for a hybrid plant, it would be a little bit stronger, but I don't know if I either got like a weaker seed or maybe it's just me that's weak. I would put more of the blame on me than the plant, by the way, but it's still a really neat plant. It's a lot narrower and more heart shaped than the mag lux um whereas it, i don't know if you remember seeing my mag lux it's like very very round um whereas this one is just a little narrower which is pretty reminiscent of the crystallinum the next one is one that is extremely thirsty <laughs> and very small still this one was grown from a stump recently this is an anthurium bellowanum not my most favorite anthurium out there but i do think it's going to be a nice contrast in terms of shape and leaf texture to the rest of my anthurium. Oh, I forgot to turn off that. My bug light, my fungus gnat bug light. Works really well, by the way. Yes, I'm doing something very exciting to this wall. Sorry, gonna take a quick tangent. I, on, in my last week of, I installed this new shelf here. So many people hated it. 
And honestly, it looks better in person. I'm not trying to justify it, but it does look better in person. But now that the comments have simmered and I'm looking at it, I'm like, yeah, it's a little, it's a little weird. I think I tried to like force it to happen when maybe it shouldn't have happened in the first place. So I'm doing something different on this wall. That's gonna happen this month. Very excited. I'm gonna have a lot more space for plants. So um, yeah, this one's a keeper. Uh, Amanda, she sent me this cutting and she was like, why did I send you a bellow? And I'm like, throw it away. And I was like, no. I want to keep it. This is mine now. And yeah, they have like really big Dumbo ears and it kind of kind of has similarities if I can remember to the Anthurium brownie eye. Very long petioles can have very very large leaves, but I think this one's going to be kind of a fun one to have. So anyway, quick feature on that one that not much is going on. Um, it's still brand new to this world. But the next one is the next one is an Anthurium Woohoo's First Night. So this one is a, a hybrid of, I believe, a Indopappy hybrid or an Indopappy crossed with a Tazula dark form Ace of Spades. And she's Gorgina. I love this plant so much. I can't remember if I've ever grown this one in a greenhouse when I first acquired it from Amanda, um, but it's been living out here. She's still alive. It is yellowing a bit, but I can see something happening. Kind of looks like it's pushing a new leaf. This one is not in catafil yet, despite it being kind of on the larger side. But I'm seeing some good um, leaf size growth. This one, I can't remember. Wait, hold on. I can remember. Hold on. Oh, oh, I remember. Okay, so I was growing this one over here when I still had my Millsbow wide and I had a bunch of like my acclimatizing Anthurium out there. That was before I repotted it into this big pot, which wow, look at those roots, delicious. It was in a much smaller pot. This whole bottom of the leaf, I didn't realize how big it was getting. It was scraping up against another pot in there and then this whole thing was like growing like this and it was hitting the bottom of the glass because it was getting so tall. So yeah, that was just me being very neglectful, not kind of seeing how big the leaf was actually getting. But other than that, it's been growing pretty okay. So very happy to have this one. I do think as it matures, it gets sort of like, I think a rounder, a rounder sinus. Let me just, if I'm remembering incorrectly, I'll pop in a photo of Woohoo's mother plant or like a more mature plant. But this one's really fun. I really like the color of this one as well. It's not as sort of like dark as my other Anthurium, but it has like that nice sort of limey color with the undertones of the dark, like mossy green. And it has a very slightly pinkish, pinkish sinus. I find that my camera doesn't really pick up those colors very well, but like right in here, it has pink and then right in the little booty hole area, it's pink as well. I'm extremely excited to show this next plant because for the longest time, it was just a stump, like the stumpiest stump you've ever seen. And I almost just like chopped it into a million little stumps and I'm kind of glad that I just stuck it out because now we finally have something. The next one is none other than King of Spades himself. This is my slowest growing Anthurium of all time. I don't care what anyone says, the King of Spades grows so dang slow. I can't stand it because it's such a cool and beautiful Anthurium and it just makes you work so hard to just get a single leaf. So this is the leaf that I had for the longest time. I think this has been on this plant for a year and some change. And it's just been like this, no sign of new growth, nothing. And then suddenly, I didn't even repot it. Like it's been in this pot for forever, drainage holes. I repotted it so long ago that I wasn't even using, I don't even think I was using tree fern fiber yet. That's how long ago it's been. So it's just like straight soil, your regular aeroid amendments in here, some LECA. And it just randomly blessed me with this leaf and it's like such a crazy size growth. You can see it's got some pinhole fenestrations. <laughs> That's not on purpose. 
that's just from growing in ambient conditions it kind of just what comes with the territory but look at the size and the shape and the color and the venation i am just blown away by this plant every single time doesn't matter not even just mine like any king of spades i just feel like this is one of the coolest freaking plants out there um, if you guys didn't know, I acquired this plant before it really got popular on the market. And I'm not saying that as like a flex. It was just when we were ordering a different, when I ordered my indo Pappy hybrid, his name is Randy. I will link his uh, Instagram in the description if you guys want to buy from him. I don't know what he has right now. I haven't ordered from him in like years, but this is who we got it from. I think this is who we got it from. I hope I'm remembering correctly, <laughs> but um, yeah, we were ordering something else. We were ordering those like Indie Indo Pappy hybrids, and then he randomly just like showed us this, and he call he was calling it a Red Magnificum, and we were like, um, yep, we'll take like ten of those, please. Um, and I had never seen one before, but they were all so different. Like there was so much variation between all of the different options he showed us. There were some with just like crazy, crazy bright, thick white venation. There were some that had like, it was more of like a heart shape rather than mine where it's kind of like, it's got a little chin down here. You know, I think Alice's plant is a little bit more symmetrically round or at least has more of a heart shape. Whereas yeah, mine is just very bottom heavy. But anyway, Either way, whatever this is, it's freaking beautiful. And I feel like this is one Anthurium that every Anthurium lover needs in their collection. To me, it is absolutely worth the investment. It's worth the time. It's worth the energy. It's worth the heartache. And I say heartache because I find this to be one of the hardest to propagate. So if you can find one that's like fully rooted already, that would be like perfection i wouldn't pay too much for like a stump cutting i wouldn't really ever advise seriously to even buy like a mid cut especially if it's like a one or two noter because i have lost so many propagations of this plant i sent amanda a butt cut completely rotted totally died so that's just my recommendation for the uh the king of spades i don't know if anyone else has that experience with it but for sure for me and my friends we find this one to be a bit more challenging but again just so worth the wait so i'm excited to see how much more this expands it's still quite soft it still has that nice sort of like greenish greenish color to it when it's expanding and um i'm just so happy to have a new leaf Ugh. I don't wanna even show this to you guys. I really freaking don't. I don't know if it was in my week of plant chores or if it was in that one video where I did like more of like a day of plant chores, but ugh, I fudged up this leaf so bad. Look at it. You can see my entire face in this hole. It's so large. Um, so if you're wondering how a dumb dumb dummy does this, I was, so this plant was originally sitting in this little cart looking thing here. I dragged my Rudsta from my bedroom out here. And on the back of the Rudsta is a very botched drilling job for the electrical hole. And there's all this like jagged metal that's <laughs> sticking out back there. Not safe at all, I wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, it must have just caught it as I was pushing it past it. And it just took a chunk out of the leaf. And I'm really sad because it was such a good, it was such a good leaf and it was such a good size. This was the leaf before it. I upsized the pot. It's in pawn. It's gonna need a bigger pot like yesterday. And then it pushed out this big girl and then I just ruined it. I didn't even tell you what this is. This is a novelty Ace of Spades. Also, I got, also got this one from Amanda and it's been so much easier than my regular Ace of Spades. My Ace of Spades freaking hates me. I'm even like contemplating whether I wanna show it to you today or not because it's so pathetic looking. I just struggle with that plant so much. So this one has been a lot easier. Granted, it doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't really give lots of Ace of Spades vibes, but it's a, it's a really cool one and it's um it's fun to grow pretty easy to grow I would say has a nice leaf color but even though I have just gotten a new leaf it kind of looks like it's 
going to be pushing out another one soon, which is kind of crazy because I never get anthurium leaves like basically one after the other. So this one is just overachieving right now. But yeah, I do want to get it into a bigger pot because it is super root bound in here. And I'm surprised that I don't have like rotted roots for like how musty and crusty this vessel has gotten. Another cool thing about the Novelty Ace is it's got this really nice sort of like burgundy-ish color to the abaxials. And yeah, this one's not doing bad. It's really just me being careless. I was contemplating whether I even wanted to show this to you guys or not because it's also kind of like rehab looking, but this is my Anthurium Roqueanum Esmeralda. Um, I've talked about this a bit in previous videos and this is the reason why I no longer have a regular Roqueanum. I just struggle so much with the queen. I feel like I was okay at growing it when I first had it back in like 2020. One was it 2021? I may have even acquired it in 2020. There's a good chance, but I've never been really like wonderful at growing the queen, and I, I do find it to be kind of finicky. Like it does well to a certain point, and then it just like tanks all of a sudden. The process was a little bit too volatile for me. Um, just too much ups and downs. So the Esmeralda was offered to me at a great price. I got this from Lauren at North Shore Tropicals and it's been so much better. I know that it's kind of maybe hard to believe that because it looks like this, but to be fair, I have been neglecting this thing a lot. And um, this leaf actually grew in my tent and it was so effing hot in there and the substrate was just like bone dry because I forgot that it was even in there because it was a stump. Like I had chopped it back to nothing when it got really bad spider mites. Didn't even know this leaf grew in the tent and yeah, you should have seen it when I found it. The leaf was like, it was like spin. I don't even know how it came back, but it was like spinach. So I'm surprised it even looks as well as it does now but yeah i don't know not, not really much else to say about it there are i've seen sort of different varieties of the esmeralda this one wasn't quite the one i had in mind there was one specifically that i saw from a grower where hers was almost like to my recollection the color wasn't so green. It was more of that Waroquianum bluish tint, but not as dark. And the Venetian was like a bright white, like the Waroquianum or like a silvery white. So yeah, I mean, it's not, this isn't my favorite Anthurium in the collection. I probably could easily part with it if it ever came to that. But I am curious to see like how much more it can I guess mature, maybe once the leaves get a little bit bigger, I'll appreciate it a little bit more, but I just thought it was worth showing it to you. I don't know what it is, you guys, um, but one day I just became decent at growing the Clarinervium. This plant used to be my kryptonite. And I say kryptonite because uh, the Clarinervium has been historically one of my favorite Anthuriums ever. I feel like it's an Anthurium that is overlooked so much because of how common it is, how easy it is to grow. It's not, you know, a crazy dark like Anthurium and I, I don't know. It just doesn't get the love that I feel like it deserves. It's just such a unique Anthurium. Like look at the leaf shape, the freaking overlapping lobes. That venation is just unlike anything. It's so like like a spider web there's so much going on to it but historically i've been so terrible at growing it i've tried so many times i'm saying so so often so annoying i was really bad at growing it and then one day my friend ren <laughs> gave me advice that would change my life forever she was like you're not bad at growing clarinervium you're just not treating it like a succulent and i was like a succulent? What do you mean? She was like, water it sparingly. Um, don't be afraid to go longer periods between watering it. It can, it has like the resiliency to be on the drier side a bit. But when you do water it, water it freaking thoroughly and deeply. And that's really exactly what I do with my, with my succulents. So that's what I've been doing with this Anthurium. And she has not died yet. And you guys, I acquired this 
Hmm. Was it last Christmas? Last Christmas or the one before it? Like it was, like this should have been dyed by now. Like I don't understand. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a fluke. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I've been following that advice to a T. I do have it in a pot with drainage. There's no tree fern fiber in this. This is just soil and perlite pretty much. Um, when I repotted this, I wasn't even using tree fern fiber yet. It's been in this pot for a very long time. Um, and yeah, that's exactly what I do. So I actually keep it at the very top there. It's not getting a ton of light. And the reason I put it up there is, well, one, the petioles are so effing long. And two, I kind of forget to water the plants up there. Like I'm pretty good at like walking by and like looking at a pot and being like, oh, I need to add water to that. But I'm not really seeing what's going on there because I'm built like an Oompa Loompa. I'm very short, so I'm not looking at it all the time and it just dries out, but it's kind of like to my advantage. Otherwise, I think if I saw how dry the vessel got, I would be tempted to water it, but I don't. And look at her. She's a thing of beauty. So beautiful. I just love, I love this leaf. It's unlike any other. I remember this was one of the first Anthurium I had owned. I actually think, so the first Anthurium I ever owned was the Anthurium Moroccoianum when I got it from Equigenera US back in 2019. And then I got another queen from someone local. And then I got the Clarinervium. And I just remember being in awe of this plant like no other, like even more than the queen. I was just like, this is, this, this is my life now. I'm living for her and um, I tend to kind of forget about this guy, honestly, because it's so high up. But anytime I bring it down, I just have to appreciate it for the beauty that it is. So if you are looking for a more common Anthurium that's not gonna break the bank, get a Clarinervium. We gotta give more love to the common ones. The Crystallinum, for one, is a magical anthurium. I wish that I had just a regular crystallinum in my collection. I only have a crystal black. I want a regular one. And then good old clarinervium. The next one is another plant I got from Amanda. This is an anthurium diabloense. This is the only silver leaf anthurium that I have and probably the only silver leaf one that I'll ever need. Um, this one is so cool. It does get confused for a different for one that's very similar there's always people that are like is this a is this a diabloense or is it a something else but i'm fairly confident this one's a diabloense i feel like it just looks very diabloense so this is a really teeny tiny baby one um i got it as even a smaller plant and it kind of looks like a new leaf is on the way which is so exciting so these leaves have um they have the ability to get much larger the ears are just so sinister and Mickey Mouse like. They're wild. Hopefully I can find the picture from Amanda's mother plant. It's not the best photo. I think she took it from like over her couch and it was just like boop and then sent it over. But yeah, hers is really, really nice and big. It becomes a lot more textural, I'll say, as it gets bigger. Like it has more texture to the leaf. Like it's not as flat. Um, it kind of becomes a little raised a little bit but like this is just so stinking good. There are a few Anthurium out there that I've seen recently where it's marketed as silver. Like you know when those Lux silvers were being pumped out like crazy? It's like you would have a silver leaf for like the few first ones, like the first or second one, and then it would just turn into like a regular Lux. And then there's some like the SP, what is it? SP Silver Angel, I think I'm thinking of that one. It's like. I've seen some that are super silver and then I've seen one of them just like, how is this a silver plant at all? So if you want a guaranteed silver plant, this is going to be my, my, recommend, my, my recommendation to you guys. And it has been very easy, very low key, hasn't really given me any grief at all. Um, I am growing this one in a mixture of soil and tree fern fiber with drainage holes, not seeing a ton of roots but I did repot this one um, not too long ago and she is not doing bad at all. These leaves are pretty much perfect. So I'm perfect, I'm just kidding. Um, far from it. But I am very proud that um, 
she's been able to grow in such harsh conditions out here. Okay, next one, I have to remind myself. This is a Bessier Af Luxurians from Woohoo Plants. Look at the shape of this leaf. It's like a bugle. Do you guys remember those bugles? Like the little cones and then you stick them on your fingers and eat them, they're like the crackers. I actually haven't seen bugles here in Canada. I don't know if that's just a US thing. They weren't actually even that tasty. I think I only really liked them and asked my mom to get them because I like putting them on my fingers and like tapping and pretending I had nails. Anyway, it kind of looks like a bugle shaped <laughs> leaf. I don't know if it's gonna stick around or if it's just this one, but it's really cool. So um, I do see a lot of Bessier Af in this in that if you look at the venation, it's neon. I feel like I don't see that a ton with Lux hybrids, but like look very carefully. Those that is like the exact color of a Bessier Af venation, of of Bessier Af venation, and I love how dark dark this leaf is. And again, you can see um, just some of that neon coming through, and it's just a cool little hybrid. So this is the last leaf that it came with when I unboxed it. This one grew in my care. Pretty good size growth being in the world's tiniest pot and it already needs to be repot. And I'm already regretting putting this in a slit pot because you guys, these pots are the freaking worst. See those slits? They may as well be knives. There's no, really no saving these, uh, these roots. They're gonna have to be chopped off. Even if I try to cut the slit open, it's like, it's so difficult because they're so tight. That's what she said. Anyway, I'm gonna repot this one because I do wanna see some growth on it. And um, hopefully, hopefully I can do so without damaging the roots too much. I can see that my ISO is slowly going up, meaning I think that the picture is probably getting a little bit more grainy because it is literally nighttime out here. But I'm almost done. I only have maybe like five more anthurium to get through on these shelves. So we're gonna just pump this out really quickly. So this is one of my favorite anthurium in my collection. This is the Red Crystal Portelay, Porte, Portelay, Portier, I don't know how to say it. Got this one from Amanda. You guys, this one pushes out offsets like no one's business. This is like the third, no, this is the fourth offset that I've gotten from this plant already. And not only does it push out random little offsets, but it just keeps growing from the main plant. She's such a strong, strong girl. But this leaf is just, I don't know why it's one of my favorites. It's not even like so vastly different than a lot of like the dark anthurium that I have in my collection. But for some reason, this just does it for me. I don't know if it's because the emergent leaf is so yummy. This one isn't even as red as it can get. Not even this one is as red as it can get. I think I took a picture of it when it was like really, really bright red and was like, wow, I love this plant. The texture of this is very hard to see. It's almost like a micro pebble. I hope that it's picking it up. It's not super flat like a, like a mag or a crystallinum. It is very textural, like so ever so slightly bumpy. It has a very slight pinkish red tinge to the sinus and a little bit on the, the edge of the leaf margins. It does kind of fade away as the leaf gets older, but it sticks around for a long time. And it's really, really cool. Um, honestly, I just love anything crossed with a red crystal and a portali is like arguably one of the freaking coolest plants out there. I'm kind of surprised that more port features did not come through with this plant, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. This one is also pot with drainage, tree fern fiber soil, getting really rooty. I think once both of these leaves harden off, we're gonna go bigger. Go big or go home. Another Amanda plant and another one of my birthday gifts. This one was from Alice. This is a Forgettii Carla. I don't feel worthy at all to have this in my house. I don't really even know why she's here. I, obviously I'm not complaining, I'm so grateful, but there are just certain plants where I'm just like, who do you think you are? Like, why are you in this house with me? Like, I, I just, I fear for your life 
but I think I've done pretty well. I think I've done pretty well. So it came with this leaf here and came with this leaf. So obviously you guys can see a lot of forgetii in that um, the sinus is like partially fused. Like this doesn't open. It's like it almost wanted to, but it didn't. This one is partially open as well. Forgetii looking sinus. It's kind of protruded a bit. Um, but this one has like a fully open sinus, which is interesting. But man, that carlovination, she said, my dominant trait, I'm gonna give it to you, child. And it didn't disappoint. And don't even get me freaking started on this leaf color. Like, look at her, she's a mermaid. She's a thing of beauty and I'm just, I wanna be buried with this plant, okay? I lied, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven more plants and it's nighttime, okay. I'm gonna go through this one very fast because this is another one that kind of almost made it onto my rehab list. So this is an Anthurium Chia Pacents crossed with a Vera Pacents. I also acquired this from Amanda and it's cool, okay? I'm not gonna lie, I think both parent plants are very, very cool and I just like how, I don't know, to me this is a very like, if a Spiritus was an Anthurium, I love how skinny and narrow these leaves are kind of similar to the equidurants but way cooler than the equidurants it's just this plant hates me for some reason i've had this for a very long time i think i got this more than a year ago now i could be wrong but i think it's been more than a year and look how teeny tiny it is it's not even the size of my head but i have a very big head i had to be like vacuumed out of my mom but yeah she's so tiny she just doesn't want to do anything um it's in pond with drainage Roots look fine-ish, fine. It's not super rooty, but I did uh, repot this not too long ago. So I don't know what she wants from me. I don't know if she wants to be in a greenhouse, but like I look at this plant and I'm like, you don't seem like a plant that needs high humidity or high temps. But obviously I'm doing something wrong because this should be way, way bigger by now, but it's not. Um, so that's all for that one. Not gonna spend too much time with it. The next one is a newer acquisition. So this is from Erin. I know I haven't talked about Erin a lot on this channel. I used to talk about her a lot. She's a horse girl now. I've mentioned that before. She's not really super into plants anymore. So she gave away a bunch of her plants. We inherited a lot of them. And this is one of them that she grew from. I think she grew this one from a seed. So this one is an Ace of Spades mag and she's yummy. She's delectable. Unfortunately, I didn't know, because this one's living on the top shelf as well. I didn't know that a new leaf was coming out, and this one was basically almost growing inside of one of the fenestrations on the uh, Thai constellation. And I was like, oh, maybe I should help her. So she's a little mangled. She's a little warped. But I mean, it's kind of a decent size. And I definitely see the mag in this leaf now where like the venation is getting a lot thicker a little brighter i don't see any mag here to me i would have thought maybe like an ace pappy hybrid or something but i did not see mag at all but i'm excited to see how this one turns out i think a few of my friends have this. I think maybe Jing has one and Alice has one and I think they all kind of look a bit different. This was an offset from the main plant. Lauren has the main plant and I don't know if she's gonna have a picture of what it looks like because that would have a bit more of a mature leaf and if she's able to send me a photo, I will plug it in now. And if she wasn't able to send me a photo, then I'm just doing this for no reason. Maybe I'll insert a picture of SpongeBob if I don't have a picture of the plant. Okay, next is a plant you would have seen. <laughs> this poor thing. I did a collab with Alice yesterday on her channel and I had to haul a bunch of plants there. It was like torrential downpour and it was, rain it was just raining so hard. It was kind of windy at one point. The plants were just going everywhere when we were hauling it back to the car. So this one was just like completely flopped over. It almost came out of the soil completely. But this is my Vag Lux. And yes, you heard that right. It's a Vag Lux. 
So this is one of Lauren's um, hybrids. It is a Crystalline Mag crossed with a Forgetti Eye Lux. The reason that we call it the Vag Lux is because her Crystal Mag mother plant, one of the leaves on the back of the leaf, it looked like it had like a little labia, like little lips. Like it just looked like a full on beginda. So it's just so much easier to call this the Vag Lux rather than Crystal Mag Forgetti Eye Lux. But it's a cool, it's a really cool hybrid. I'm surprised that it's as dark as it is considering the mother plant has like the craziest, brightest, thickest silver venation that didn't come through at all. I feel like when you cross anything with the Lux, the Lux is just like, well, it's gonna look like a Lux and this is no different. I've seen many seedlings come out of this batch and they're so, like they're also vastly different. Um, some of them have this really just, I, I don't know why the word buttery always comes to me, but just this buttery, delicious, brownish, coppery emergent leaf, and it's just so good. And some of them have like a really like distinct heart shape. Some of them are longer and skinnier. And so I feel like Lauren has had kind of a hard time parting ways with a lot of the seedlings that came out of that batch because it's just so good. But I will say I am enjoying mine. Um, I don't think that mine was one of the stronger seedlings that came out of that batch because it's just so tiny and these roots have been so finicky in my care. It's been in pretty much every substrate under the sun, been with no drainage, with drainage, and I've just struggled with it a lot. And it's just a really, really slow grower. Like I hardly get any new leaves on this thing at all. And it was living in a greenhouse at one point. I only took it out recently just because I don't know, I feel like it didn't really need it. I think it was gonna be slow regardless. But look at how dark this leaf is. I don't know if that's because I blasted it with light or if maybe this plant is just gonna be giving me super dark leaves. Either way, I'm not complaining because this is like black, you guys. It's like a bluish black. I would say that this is probably the darkest anthurium leaf in my collection right now, which is kind of surprising. Anywho, blabbed about that for way too long. Here's another one of my Christmas gifts. So this is another plant from Lauren. This is a Doriaki silver crossed with a red crystal. And there's really not much else to say about it. I think it just got traits, like the best traits from both parents. It got, did I say the best traits? It got the best traits from both parents. Does really have like that bright Doriaki venation where it's really, really thick and it kind of bleeds into the plant and then also gets like really close to the leaf margin, like the venation, silver venation gets really close to the leaf margin. But then it has like the red crystallinum leaf color, I would say, and then it has like the reddish tint from the red crystal. And it's really like kind of impossible to see it on camera and it's kind of fading now, but the, uh, the tops of these ridges on the venation, it's like ever so slightly pinkish red. And I have loved this plant ever since she brought it into the shop. Um, it was just a little bit out of my price range and every time she would have a sale or a restock and I would see this plant, I'd always just be like drooling over it. Um, so I'm just so happy to have this. I do think that I need to repot it soon because it's still in the same vessel but it's not as rooty as I thought it would be. It is in tree fern fiber, like straight tree fern fiber and perlite and a little bit of bark. So I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, she's doing okay. Speaking of Doriaki, um, this is another plant from Lauren. Ugh. So this is a Doriaki silver. I've said in previous videos that I don't believe this to be like a true Doriaki because the Doriakis that I've seen uh, overseas, they have a much darker leaf, like a naturally darker leaf color than this, where like the green part of it is basically like this color. Maybe a little lighter, but much darker than what mine is right now. And someone put it perfectly, cause I kept saying it's rounder than this. Like it's so round, but this like, this is so round, right? You're like, how much rounder can it get? But someone in my comments was like, 
I've noticed that the true Doriakis, they don't have this little fishtail. And it's so funny that I couldn't put my finger on it, like to explain exactly why it wasn't as round as the ones that I've seen before. And yeah, it's true. It doesn't have this little pointy tip. It literally just looks like this. Like it's just round. It's like a little bowl and it's so stinking cute. So I still have one of those. Um, on my wish list, I would still love to own one if I could. But this is a close second and it scratches that itch because look at how bowl-like it is. Like you could eat some noodles from here. This is like a lily pad and it grows so fast. This one hardened off not too long ago, probably like five days ago it hardened off and I can already see a new leaf coming out, which is wild. It needs to be repotted badly. It's in Lauren's soilless. Soilless soil mix. So it's like a cocoa shredded, finely grounded cocoa husk, fir bark, perlite, worm castings. And I think that's it. Um, very happy. Like the roots are just incredibly healthy and happy, but it definitely needs to be upsized. And um, yeah, I'm happy to have this one because it's just been very, very easy, very low key. There is some cosmetic damage, which I truly believe is from underwatering because it has drainage holes and this one is very thirsty. So I've honestly been just filling this cover pot with water and just kind of letting it sit in water. I think when I repot it, I am going to like remove some of these lower leaves because it's like a bush, you guys. This is like my bushiest anthurium right now. She does not want to drop leaves, but it's still very, very cute. I think she still has some of these in stock maybe but if she does i would highly recommend snagging one because that is a plant that is going to make you feel like such a great plant parent because it's so fast growing and easy to grow okay i have two more two more to get through here and then we're going to head into the plant room where there is light i showed this one also in the collab with alice so this is what my friends and i are calling the tofu getty eye this is a collaborative effort between Jing and Alice. I will link both of them in the description. So Jing has a plant that she imported from, I believe, Indonesia. And I believe it's some kind of mag ace. I'm not sure my friends are fully convinced that that's what that hybrid is, but I look at that and I see mag ace. I've also seen someone post a plant that was so similar that was also a mag ace. I think Alice believes that there could be forgettii in the mother plant as well. Maybe like a mag forgettii ace. I would actually believe that because Jing's mother plant, it'll push like, it's a fully mature flowering plant obviously, but it's like each leaf looks so different. Like you would think they're from completely different plants but it's the same, like sometimes it'll have a fused sinus, sometimes it'll have like a big wide open sinus and she's just so unpredictable. So that's the mom. And then they um, crossed it with Alice's dark, I can't remember if it's her dark forgetty eye, but then she has another one that she calls like dark-ish forgetty eye, where it's not like completely, completely dark, but it's not like the silver veined forgetty eye. But either way, we call this tofu getty eye because she grew the mother plant, Jing grew the mother plant in like a tofu container. And since we don't really know the ID definitively, we just call the little babies tofu getty eye. Tofu getty eye now. And it just kind of rolls off the tongue. I highly recommend watching Alice's video, which I will also link in the description because we compared my tofu getty eye to the three that she has. She has one that's about the same size as mine and then she has two sort of like weaker seedlings and they all look so different and it was just a great sort of snippet to show how variable um, seedlings can be from the same batch. But I just really love the one that I got because the leaf shape to me is absolutely perfect. Like it is perfection. Like that is like token, token anthurium shape. This sinus how it's kind of like it's like a keyhole and then it kind of puckers out a little bit i don't know if you can see it it's got like a slight pucker sort of like a deep little belly button sinus and it's so cute i love the venation on this i love the color of it i love the texture it's not completely flat it has 
a little bit of a surface texture to it and I just feel like I got such a good such, such a good seed from that batch. I keep telling them that I want to chop this plant for Alice and Jing so that we all have a piece of it. Alice has voiced that she thinks I should grow it out and get it really big, but there's a part of me that is scared that something's gonna happen to this plant and I just like the idea of having backups of things. So maybe later down the line, um, I'll chop it, but for now we're gonna leave it as is. It's growing in pond with Leka down at the bottom. Obviously it has drainage holes. Um, I'm gonna repot it soon because I can see a ton of roots in here and I have moved to a new Anthurium sizing up method, which is just sizing up the pots a lot quicker. And I will talk about that in the Q&A, Anthurium Q&A next week. Last one out here, guys, I'm so out of breath because I've been trying to get all of these Anthurium done in time and I have not turned my camera off once. It's probably so hot. She's on fire and I've been filming for almost two hours straight. <sighs> I like this one because this leaf specifically, it kind of looks like you took like a big mature leaf and then shrunk it down and it kind of just looks like a pop socket. I imported this from, I think it was Tropicals Plants or Equigenera, I can't remember, but it was growing really well for me at a certain point. I think the largest leaf that I grew was maybe about this big, maybe a little bit bigger. But then spider mites happened, I got dry rot, and it just kind of went through it all. So it was really, really ugly for a long time. So what I did was like chop the stem into multiple pieces, had a bunch of propagations, and I just kept one of the props. I think I had maybe four total. This one was my favorite of all the props that came out of it. And it's been slow growing, and even when it was like a full plant, it was kind of slow growing as well. But that's okay. I feel like I've already gotten off to a good size um, for being a prop. And this caterpillar looks like it's starting to swell. So we might have something new coming along. But yeah, if you're looking for a good crystal, um, I recommend the crystal black just because the leaf itself is so, so dark. And the venation, it does have the ability to be a little bit more silver, but this prop specifically has like more of a sort of a dark green, not dark green, like a lime green venation. But yeah, wow, that's it. I think I got them all. No, I didn't, I have one more. Do you guys see my Vitar folium right there? It's not much to look at, honestly. It randomly had thrips. Like, I got rid of thrips in my collection uh, earlier this summer. Like, I had like a full-on thrips spider mite outbreak for like two years straight randomly just all the thrips went away and then one day i was watering i noticed that one of the leaves was really wonky and my immediate thought was like thrips and yep sure enough found it so it's kind of on the mend it's not much to look at right now it's a little three leaf plant growing in no drainage and pond leaves are about this big anywho i hope you're not too bummed that i'm not taking it out for you guys but anyway i'm going to clean up a little bit here catch my breath give my camera a little bit of a break and then we are gonna head into the plant room and I think I can take things at a little bit of a slower pace, but I think we're doing good on time. I'm trying a bit of a different background this time because I don't wanna deal with the backlighting and how it goes crazy. Um, and also I figure if we have a less busy background, you guys will be able to focus on the plants a little bit more. The only thing is it's so much hotter in here, my goodness. Okay, so we still have quite a f bit of plants to get through. I will say if you have been watching like pretty much every video, if you watched my week of specifically, you're probably gonna see a lot of the same things. I didn't show every single one, but I did go through a lot of new leaves in my tent, so it's gonna be a bit redundant, but I figure for the sake of doing an entirety I figure for the sake of doing an entire Anthurium collection, I should go through them again, even though I feel like I've had the wind knocked out of me. And I looked at how long the video, the first video I recorded was, and I do think this video is going to be well over two hours long. So hope you guys had a lot to do today, or at least watch this in little spurts. So anywho, um, the first one that I'm going to start with that is growing in my plant room 
is my Anthurium Lon Longicimolobum. This is one of my newer acquisitions. I believe I got this at the Tropicals pop-up at Lauren's shop in October. If I can remember, I think this was my birthday gift to myself. I have been wanting this plant for a long time. Amanda did send me a cutting of it or like a stump and it died and I was very sad. But I just think this is one of the coolest like non-velvety anthurium. I feel like it has such a cool leaf shape and this midrib that just protrudes so much is like, oh my gosh, it's so good you guys. It's such a, I know that it doesn't look like it but it's such a textural plant if you're into the texture like it's so good and yeah the leaf shape is what gets me the most and it has the potential to get so much larger these lobes get so much taller and it's just ugh, it's so so cool the new leaf that came out however <laughs> um didn't get the memo about the bunny ears and it has like the widest sinus ever i don't know what is happening um it has like a portoli sinus which is just kind of funny i don't mind it i just was not expecting it and this is the first leaf in my care it i bought it with this leaf and so i'm just excited to see any growth um i am growing this one with no drainage it's in a mixture of perlite and tree fern fiber i don't know if there's any soil in here there might be a little bit, but it is heavy on the tree fern fiber. Hasn't rooted as fast as I thought it would, but I don't know if this is like the um, Vichii in that it's not a very rooty plant. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not, but yeah, I can't wait to see what this new leaf is going to harden off as. Unfortunately, by the time that I edit this video, this leaf is still going to be expanding, so I can't show you a photo of it, but I'll see if i can throw it up on my instagram anyway this one is living in my exo not a very high humidity exo it's probably at most like 60 percent in there maybe upward to 65 70 when i do spray wet the poles in there um, but that one once the new leaf hardens is going to be making it out onto the shelf Next one is a humble little queen. This was a gift from Lauren. Um, so this is just a regular luxuriance. And I grew it from a little stick. And it took a while for this new leaf to come out. But um, she did make her way into the world one day. And it's just the tiniest, most perfect little thing. Alice has always alluded to, like when the whole Lux Silvers dropped and they came out, she was like, they're all silver when they're brand new. And I had never, like I hadn't owned a Luxurians long enough. I mean, I acquired a mature one from a friend, but I think it had some kind of fungal thing when I acquired it. it went downhill very fast, but previous to that, I had never owned one. And even when I did, I didn't own it long enough to like fully experience it. So I didn't really know much about the Lux but now I can see exactly what she's saying. It's not even like conditions or care that I had to do anything specific. The new leaves are just silver, but I finally have a second new leaf on it and it took forever, but she's finally here. It doesn't look like it's gonna be massive, but that's okay. I would much rather have this thing grow nice and steady because again, when I acquired one that was more mature, it just wasn't, it wasn't a great time. Um, I had a hard time getting it to acclimatize to my conditions, so growing plants like these that I feel can be kind of more finicky, although Lauren says that luxes are like the easiest to grow, I would much rather start with a small plant. But this one is in a mixture of, I think this is Lauren's mix, so it's again that soilless, uh, soilless soil mix, the grounded up cocoa husk, some regular cocoa husk, fur bark, worm castings, perlite. This is the second crystallinum in my collection. I know it doesn't look much right now. It doesn't look like much right now. And again, I was tempted to add this to my rehab list, but since it has a new leaf, I was like, you know what, fine, we'll show you off. So this is the Anthurium crystallinum silver special that is from Tropicals Plants. And I'm gonna throw in a photo of one of 
Lauren's plants. So this is not like a clone from it. This just came from the same batch. I don't think that mine is going to be as silvery as that, but just to kind of give you some context or something to compare it to what one of these silver specials can look like. It really is silver and it really is special. I typically don't like these like fancy random names given to it, but I think that one is pretty appropriate. Mine just kind of looks like a regular crystal, which I don't mind, or like a crystal silver, like super, super silver crystal. But I am curious to see what this new leaf is going to look like. Probably not going to be very large just based on how large it was when it emerged. Um, and again, this just came from a little offset, so I kind of knew that we'd have to start really, really tiny, humble beginnings, you know, gotta start somewhere. It is in my mix, so I thought this was in Lauren's mix, but this is in a mixture of tree fern fiber soil, perlite bark. Seems happy, happy enough, but I did struggle with this plant a little bit in the beginning. I thought I almost lost it. I do have a second offset, but I'm not gonna show it to you because it looks very ugly. Here is another Amanda plant, um, not her hybrid. We just got it from her, and when I say we, I mean me and Alice. Um, so Alice had it first in her care. She propagated it and gave me a little piece of it. I just don't wanna cut this leaf off because again, like I've said before, in my plants, in my, for my plants that live primarily in my plant room or in a greenhouse, I don't chop the leaves off. I just let them sort of naturally fall off and let it do its thing. Um, but the ones in my living room, I don't like seeing yellow leaves out there, so I'll typically chop them off. Even if it means it kind of depletes nutrients that could move into the rest of the plant, to me, it's just, it's just how it goes in this house. So anyway, this is a Anthurium Carob Queen. Can't remember if I told you guys that already. Um, this is a hybrid of a RG Dresslerai crossed with a Regulosum Agrio, wait, Lago Agrio Road. It's basically just two really freaking cool plants that got shmushed together into this guy. I, I do think that the leaf has the ability to get darker than this. I think I've just not been giving it the best lighting conditions, but the ones that I've seen online are much darker than the leaf I have. Uh, but basically look exactly the same, has this really like sort of pebbly texture to it. Really takes on a lot of the features of the Regulosum. I've never owned a Regulosum myself, I never really had the desire to own one, but I think as a hybrid it looks really cool. Uh, this one is living in tree fern fiber and perlite, a little bit of pond in here. Lekka down at the bottom. I can't remember if Alice potted this for me or if I did. Actually, you know what? I remember she, she gave it to me in one of those little parfait cups, so I think I would have done this. And I can see some nice roots forming. I'm not quite ready to move out just yet, but um, she's not doing too bad. This here is a Magnificum Nigrolaminum GG. I originally thought this was one of Lauren's hybrids, but it actually was from my friend Jesse. And it's just so funny because I would have had seeds from the same batch as his, and I don't know if maybe his was like the strongest seedling from that batch, but his is like, it looks like it's flowering size already, and mine is just like this tiny little runty thing. Um, I don't know if it's because it's just been living in a tiny little cup, but it hasn't like been super rooty So I didn't really feel I felt like it was already in a pot that was bigger than the size of the plant Considering this just came out like two weeks ago So anyway, I definitely can see both parent plants in here. I would say that it leans more towards the maybe Nigro Laminum Gigi side uh, I can see the mag shape of the leaves, obviously, but to me, everything else screams Nigro GG, and I have a new leaf coming out. Let me plug in a photo of Jesse's plant so you guys can get an idea of what this guy could potentially look like when it's bigger, um, but right now, she's just a little tiny baby. I have not shown this plant on my YouTube yet or on Instagram or anywhere because I literally just acquired it and I'm a little bit shooketh, uh, to be honest. 
So this is another plant from Jesse. This is not his hybrid, but he surprised me with this one day and just for no good reason at all, just decided to give me this plant. So this is um, actually a Cartel Dawn plant. It is a Anthurium Bigfoot crossed with a Goliath. So many of you probably have no idea what that means. So I'm gonna throw in a photo of the Anthurium Bigfoot. I don't know if this is a Cartel Dawn, like if this is the Cartel Dawn mother plant, but I found it on the Googs and it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. And I have just recently wanted to add this to my wish list while um, doing research for this video. So the Anthurium Bigfoot is, it's a, apparently a no ID plant, but to me, this kind of screams Crystallinum Carla. I don't know if you guys will agree with me, but it is stunning. It's so good so delicious so dark the venation is so bright and i like that it doesn't go all the way to the edge of the leaf margin like a carla which is why i think it has carla in it now the anthurium goliath is essentially a anthurium darkest panama i love the darkest panama i would love that plant one day if i could i like how it has kind of similar to was it the carla Carla Bivep, where the venation is kind of like this orange marmalade cotton candy color. It's not quite reddish or pinkish. It's not silver or white. It's just kind of in between and it's like this orangey color and it's so good. Here's the thing though. So Cartel, they, in their description of the Goliath, they say that it's not a darkest Panama, but I don't see anything but Darkest Panama. I even talked to um, Alice about this and I just think that it's a cross between this Bigfoot and a Darkest Panama. Anyway, that's sort of the backstory of the parent plants of this. Right now, it's a teeny tiny little lad and in true Jesse style, like look at how tiny this plant is and look at how massive Okay, I can't take it out, but look at how massive this pot is. It's so big, but this is how Jesse sizes up his anthurium so fast. He puts them in like the world's largest pot right from the beginning. He doesn't even bother. I don't even think he owns little tiny baby pots. I think his go-to is always gonna start in these like four inch or five inch pots. And for as tiny as the plant is, like the roots go all the way down to the bottom. So all credit goes to Jesse for my shift in how I've been caring for Anthurium and sizing them up a little bit faster. Just go bigger, go bigger. It, I'm telling you, it works. Um, it looks like he potted it in a tree fern fiber. I don't know if there's soil in here. It could just be straight tree fern fiber with perlite. There's a little bit of LECA, a very, very large LECA layer, actually. And I'm guessing the LECA layer is so large because he would have potted it when it was just a teeny tiny seedling like this. So yeah, anyway, I'm so excited to have this. Thank you so much, Jesse. I think this is gonna just be such a beautiful plant. I can tell already just by the way that this leaf looks and I'm going to take care of this with my life. The next one is a plant that I acquired from Amanda. You guys are probably so tired of hearing me say that, but seriously, like 50% of my collection is from that lady. So this is my Anthurium papillolaminum uh, Wonder Boy. If you don't know what a Wonder Boy is, I don't know much about it. I think that it's a type of red crystallinum. There is Wonder Boy A and Wonder Boy B. I don't know what the difference is between both of them. And the Wonder Boy, one thing, one distinct feature about the Wonder Boy is that in the emergent leaf, it has this just bright pink cotton candy venation color. It's similar to the red crystal, but I would say that it's even more sort of like strikingly bright, like almost neon. So it didn't quite get that feature in this hybrid um, because again, you're gonna get those really strong pappy genetics in this plant, but I do see it a bit and you can kind of see how pink that sinus is. Even in the old leaves, it keeps that sort of pinkish color, which is a nice little touch. It looks like a little belly button. She looks rough though, guys. Like I have not had the best track record with this plant. Um, actually, 
before this leaf i had two other leaves that tried to emerge and they basically just like they came out and then when it was like a little furled up thing it just dried up and part of me thinks it's because the substrate dried out i'm still adjusting to life with no with drainage and i feel like that's such a weird thing to say because it's like the normal to have drainage but i'm still trying to get used to how fast things are drying out i don't want to get into it too much but i still don't regret doing it i still think it was a good move and i do think my anthurium have been better for it when i am on top of the care so with this one i just need to be better at watering i think and just be better at at least keeping a reserve the thing is is it's been living in my mills bow when i had the anthurium mills bow cabinet and it was very very warm and now it's in my tent, which is also very warm, but not as warm and not as humid as the Millsbow because I keep the, the tent door open. Um, so I think after another leaf, I'm going to upsize the pot for one and I'm going to get it out of the tent because I have sort of a sneaky suspicion that this one would do a lot better in lower um, temperatures. Maybe not so much lower humidity because it has had a little bit of trouble coming out of the sheath which is why you can see all these nicks but i think the lower temps might help a lot but i'm just not feeling ready yet to move this one out this is one of the newer acquisitions from woohoo plants as well so this is a forgetty eye x which i firmly believe is a forgetty eye red crystal um, it had this leaf and this leaf on it when i first got it and i know it doesn't look like much but initially I was just like, oh, it's a red crystal hybrid. I didn't initially think Forgetti Eye, um, but now that I'm seeing this leaf, I can certainly see Forgetti Eye Silver in it. And there have been other people that have had seeds from this batch and it, it they've been calling it a Forgetti Eye Crystal or they at least bought it as a Forgetti Eye Crystal. Um, and so I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But I think some of you know, my love for both the Forgetti Eye and the Red Crystal. And so to have a hybrid of it is just amazing. So yeah, I grew this one in the tent. This is getting close to the size that I would typically take an Anthurium out and acclimatize it down to lower um, conditions. But I think that I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. I think I'm gonna wait for one more leaf and then get it out of there. But I for sure am gonna get it out of this pot before it escapes the slits of death um but yeah quick feature on that one next one is a plant from lauren so this is the anthurium ace of spades green form crossed with the mag the green ace is a very very underrated under talked about anthurium i think everyone is so enamored by like the tazula dark form ace that the green form of ace kind of gets overlooked and I'll admit I didn't even know that there was a green form until I saw it in Lauren's collection and I kind of like it arguably as much as the regular Ace of Spades. Anyway, that's besides the point. I hopefully by now would have popped in a photo of her green ace and I will even, if I can get it, um, I'm gonna show you a picture of Alice's plant that she got. It's a clone from that plant. She got it from Lauren. So freaking cute. AOS Green with a mag produced this little thing. It doesn't look like much now, but I again have just a sneaking suspicion that this is gonna be really cute. I have neglected it quite a bit. I think you can see how much I've neglected it. It has needed a new pot for forever. This pond is so yucky and disgusting. And this is one that I need to give some mega attention to. The next two I'm going to show you are ones that almost made it to the rehab list, but somehow finagled its way into <laughs> this video. So this is another bunny hybrid. This is an Anthurium Magnificum crossed with the Luxurians. This has been, of all of the Lux hybrids that I've gotten from her, this one has been the most difficult. I don't know why it's been so difficult, but like i've had this for so long like i've had this plant for a very long time i'm pretty sure alice's that she got at the same time is like flowering size already and mine basically looks like it was grown from a stump and that's kind of essentially what happened it was a decent size when i got it and it just 
hated everything. It hated me. It hated life. Yeah, it was a stump for a very long time. So, anywho, yeah, I, I'm just not quite really understanding the rhythm of this plant. I'm not quite sure what it likes yet. Um, I did repot it into this vessel pretty recently and you know what? It's so funny. I'm like, oh, I don't know what it wants. I don't know what it likes. Why is it so happy? It's so freaking dry. This thing is like light as a feather. The leaves are so soft. We need to do something about this stat. I do take accountability for um, the reason why a lot of my anthuriums or just plants in general are really sad. It's very uh, uncommon that a plant will tank or just be mysterious, uh, mysteriously naughty without me having like any idea why. I can usually pinpoint why it's unhappy and four out of five times it's gonna be something that's my fault. And probably watering related. And I'm telling you guys, I am so bad with plants with, with drainage. And especially the ones in the greenhouse where it's like so much warmer. I'm like, didn't I just water you like two days ago? But you know, if you think about it, like really, really tiny vessels, lots of heat, not a good combination. Um, your, your plants are gonna dry out so fast. So anyway, here's just a quick update on the Maglux. Not much to look at right now. And then like I mentioned earlier, my Ace of Spades, another plant that effin' hates me. Um, I showed this leaf in a recent video and was like, oh look, it looks so pretty and it's not melting and not turning yellow and it actually looks like an ace. And then shortly after it did the thing that it always does, turns yellow and almost fungly looking. And then it gave me a new leaf and I was like, ooh, it's gonna be so much bigger and it's gonna be so nice and delicious. It's like smaller than the one that came before. And I'm not even gonna say like, oh look, it's not yellowing, it's not gross. Just give it time, guys, it'll happen. And I already feel like I can see it starting to happen already on this leaf. I don't know what it is about this plant. Um, Amanda has talked about her struggles with the fungal issues on the Ace of Spades, but this is, a, this is something completely different. The issues that I'm having with my Ace of Spades it doesn't look anything like the issues that she's having with her, so I'm not even going to chalk it up to that. Um, I'm either going to say it's a, just a very naughty bad cutting, or I'm just not meant to grow an Ace of Spades. Here's one that I am very happy and excited about. This is a Woohoo um, Pap, Pap Voldemort Self. I got this in the little unboxing, and I, I can't remember if I guessed that this is what that plant was, but when I knew that Woohoo Tropicals was gonna send some plants over, I was like, please, 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 please send the Voldemort. I want it so bad. And dreams come true. Follow your dreams, everyone. Um, but I did not know. I didn't know it was that because the distinct features of the Voldemort did not appear until this leaf came out. So what you're going to see is a very, very long, skinny, narrow leaf and the most sinister, evil, sharp, and tall bunny ears you've ever seen. I'm not quite sure what the spots are about and I'm telling you guys, okay, I don't spray my anthurium. I only spray emergent leaves when they come out so that they don't get stuck like this, but I don't foliar feed my plant. I don't aim for high humidity with my plants in my tent. But anytime I grow an anthurium in an enclosed space, I get spots. It happened with my tofu gettii, it's happened with this one. And to me, I would much rather take like, or I would much rather have like dinged up leaves than have leaves with spots like this. So for me, I am all about growing anthurium in lower humidity, lower temps outside of a greenhouse. Even if you're not gonna see as much robust growth and a good comparison to kind of show that is that video that I just did with Alice. You'll notice that her and Ethereum have beefed up so much more than mine, even though we have similar potting setups, we're using the same substrate, we're both doing the potting up method, but hers are growing so much faster in the greenhouse. But the difference is, is she doesn't have issues like this when she grows in the greenhouse, but I do. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's something in the air or what. But um, anyway, I just had to get that out of the way because I was so frustrated when this leaf came out. Um, and it looked 
seemingly perfect and then as it hardened it just started showing these spots but you know what we're not focusing on that we are focused focusing on the sinisterness of this leaf and i do think typically i'm not a fan of the crazy names that people are giving in Ethereum. I kind of wish that people would just call it what it is so that it's easy to keep track of what the hybrid is, what the heck it actually is. But I will make an exception for this one because if this is not a Voldemort looking leaf, I really don't know what is. So I am super, super stoked to have this. Um, I think I'm gonna let it grow maybe two more leaves before I chop it for Alice because Obviously, this is one that she really really wants in her collection as well And I wouldn't even be surprised if I gave her like the butt cut and then hers grew like way faster than mine That's just how this stuff goes dwindling down here. How are you guys doing? This is a long freaking video Imagine how I feel I'm freaking winded um, But I've got a whole box still <laughs> but it is dwindling down. So anyway, this is a Anthurium papillolaminum crossed with a portale port portali porta portier um, this one is from Amanda. So Alice had this plant first. She chopped a little cutting for me You can kind of see I got the little I think it's the butt cut. I don't think it's a mid cut I think I got the butt cut. This is actually the second leaf that this prop has put out um, And it's really really cute if you guys don't know what a port portier portier looks like I'm gonna pop in a photo here delicious scrumptious so good so sinister i love the freaking sinus that just like looks like a spread eagle it's so dark the texture of it is like um it's not quite like your typical velvet leaf anthurium but it almost has like a satiny satiny rubbery leathery feeling to it I wish that I was better at describing leaf textures to you guys, but the port is beautiful. I would love to have just a straight port in my collection, um, but that day has not come yet, unfortunately. But anyway, I will take, I'll take a cross. I'll take a hybrid of that any day. And this one is really, really cute. I don't know if I have a more mature photo, maybe if I do, from Amanda or Alice, I'll pop it in. But I am just so happy to have a cutting of this plant because when Amanda sent it, I was like, Please God pick me. I want it so bad. This one did have spider mites by the way I don't remember if the spider mites came from Alice because we had a bad spider mite issue at the same time or if it happened in my care But either way it did have spider mites. It is no longer with spider mites, but the damage has been done unfortunately and it is growing in the same pot that I got it from from Alice not I'm not actually seeing any roots well i see a little bit but not as much as i thought there would be it's in a mixture of true fern fiber and perlite and then a thick like a layer down at the bottom oh there's a root wait i was like i saw one in the viewfinder there's one we got a single one and of course it found its way out of a drainage hole this one here looks kind of unsuspecting but this is my favorite Lux hybrid in my collection. This one is also from Amanda. This is a Ralph Lynam Fort Sherman crossed with the Lux. Unfortunately, um, I took this to Alice's house yesterday for our video and it got smushed in the box and it cracked it in half, but um, it's fine because the new leaf somehow managed to escape unscathed. It kind of looks like this one is getting ready to harden off now. It doesn't look like it's gonna expand a lot further which is surprising because, I don't know, I, I mean, I didn't repot this too long ago. I probably did this about three weeks ago now um, in hopes that it would get nice and big because here is what a mature plant looks like. This is from Amanda and it's just, it's so good. I do admittedly confuse Lux hybrids. I think a lot of them look very similar. The Lux jeans are just so strong that it almost feels like no matter what you cross it with they're all gonna look kind of the same i will say that ex that an exception is this plant because the leaves are so narrow very very dark and just has this bright pink watermelon color petioles venation in the back and then also venation in the front and it kind of keeps as it matures it keeps this really bright 
watermelon pink um, sinus. And then another one that I think is very distinct in terms of Lux hybrids is the Bessier AF Lux, like I showed you earlier, because of that really neon venation that comes through. But anyway, very, very excited to have this one. I am hoping this is, I have big dreams for this one um, in the next year coming. I would love to grow it to flowering size by the end of next year if that's possible. I do think it is because Amanda, not Amanda, Alice, she, we both neglected this one um, when we first got it. They were both in the tiniest little parfait cups. She potted hers up into a larger vessel a lot sooner than I did and her leaf is like triple this size. So I do think I can get to flowering size by the end of next year because I would love to hybridize this thing if I can. Um, but we're just a little teeny tiny baby. She's too little right now. But you can already see how yummy this uh, this plant is going to be. So anyway, there, there is that. Um, this one is an Ace of Spades Carla. And um, I, I don't... I'm not really seeing a ton of Carla in it just yet, but I do think that as it gets bigger, it's gonna come through more and I'm so excited to see it. I just wanna see what the bigger leaves are gonna look like, but this one grew in my care and I was floored. I was just like, it's so beautiful. I love the color of it. I love the very minimal venation. I love sort of how skinny and elongated the leaf is. Um, I don't know if those features are going to keep because it does vary like as a very small plant. Um, as it matures, it can change form a lot, change shape a lot. Um, but yeah, this one just so stoked to have in my house and I need to up-pot this one very soon because it is also in the world's tiniest little vessel and it has escaped. Those roots had a death sentence. Ooh, it's like a double whammy when it finds one hole and then enters another. You did that to yourself, buddy. Um, the next one is an Amanda special. So this is an Anthurium Gerald crossed with the Bessier. If you don't know what a Gerald is, it is basically just a pap hybrid. Hers specifically, it's so funny because she was telling me that she was creeped out by her, her Gerald plant because it is a very long and elongated leaf. Maybe I can find a photo of it, but the sinus freaks her out because it like protrudes so much. It's like, it looks like an Audi belly button. But anyway, yeah, that is one of the parent plants of this plant. I can definitely see a lot of Bess in it um, in terms of the color of the leaf. Of course, a Pappy can have this color as well, but I feel like the Pappy tends to be more on like the greener side rather than like that bluish green color like the Bessier. But yeah, this one is very, very fun, very dark. We just love a dark leaf anthurium. This one is growing in pond, just straight pond. It's been in here for a while. I mean, it's doing okay, but I do have sort of an inkling to move this to maybe a tree fern fiber pond mix. And it's definitely ready now because the stem is so long and I kind of want to bury it a little bit deeper. So I might sort of, you know, chop off some of these lower leaves to be able to get it deeper. But yeah, this one is fun for now. I don't quite know what it's going to look like in full maturity, but if it can keep this leaf color, I would be so happy. <sighs> Another one that snuck its way off the rehab list and into this video. This one has given me so much effing grief. This is from Amanda too. So this is a subsignatum papillolaminum. Um, subsignatum is very similar to the portili. I think the portili is a little bit prettier than the subsignatum, but has very similar leaf shape. And it has just been so naughty. I think Alice has had the same experience with hers in that it just has the tendency to just melt. And what you're looking at isn't even growth from the main plant because the top growth Hopefully you can see it melting, 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 keeps melting. This thing has tried to push out maybe like four leaves from the main growth point and none of them have ever expanded past being a little taquito. So an offset grew and was a little bit more successful, but 
still looking just looking dicey dude this one's in pawn with drainage world's tiniest pot i don't know i'm i'm frustrated with this plant i'm not gonna lie amanda did send a second plant a more mature one because she knew that me and alice were struggling with our little props but there's just a part of me that is not ready to throw in the towel yet i don't think it's like the world's most beautiful anthurium out there i do know what it looks like when it's more mature and it's pretty cool yeah it's a cool plant but it's like it's more of a pride thing where i'm like dude i feel like i've given you so much and you're just so mean to me <laughs> So I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna keep trying with this thing, but I think I am gonna move it to tree fern fiber. Believe it or not, we are almost done. Getting so close. We're so close. My voice is gonna be gone tomorrow, but I don't plan on filming any more this week after today. So the next three I'm gonna show you are the same exact plant, all from the same seed batch. I've talked about this before. <clears throat> oh my gosh, I'm losing my voice. Okay, so. Uh, Lauren and I, we collaborated. This is a Hoffmanni IX crossed with a red crystal. So I'm going to throw in a photo, hopefully I can find one, of my mother plant, the Hoff X. I'm going to say the distinct features of the Hoff X is that it has a very bluish leaf color, dark bluish, greenish leaf color, kind of similar to the... Um, the Gerald Best that I showed you before, Lo sort of like a neonish green venation, overlapping lobes around, maybe more of like an oval leaf to my recollection. But the coolest thing about the Hoff X is the red abaxials. And then of course you have the red crystallinum, which is just a magical plant itself. So um, yeah, we crossed them or but I mean, Lauren is the one that did all the work. I just dropped my plants off to her and this is what they look like. You can definitely tell that some of them are a bit stronger than others. Like I would say that this one is growing more rapidly than these two and they're in the same exact pot size, same exact substrate, living exactly in the same place in the tent. But I am seeing some really, really cool features. Uh, so this one here, I can see that it's getting really silvery, like the red crystal. I don't know if the leaves are going to harden off a bit darker, but this one seems to be a little bit more on the lighter side. And then you have one like this, where the emergent leaf is just like so pinkish red, like the red crystal. Um, but it looks like they are going to have the red crystal venation rather than the, hello, rather than the Hoff X. Venation where it's just kind of like a forgetty eye like a dark forgetty eye I don't mind because I was kind of hoping that it would take the red crystal veins I was just hopeful that it would have a red abaxial, but I don't think I don't think that we're gonna get that Unfortunately, but I am curious to see what everyone else's looks like because She's sold quite a few of these now and I know they're all gonna be very variable mine kind of look the same um, up to this point, but yeah, if you have one of these hybrids, as it gets bigger, I wanna see it, show it, give it. Okay, next one is um, a newer one from Jing. So this is an Anthurium Dark Phoenix Self. She gifted me two little seeds. They're like growing like this towards the light. One of them is pushing out a second leaf now which is pretty cool. I'm gonna have to get these out of here soon. I don't want the roots to intertwine and I don't wanna have to, um, I can already kind of see that the roots are crawling towards each other. So I'm a bit concerned about that, but it's in a mix of tree fern fiber, chopped up moss and perlite. And I'm so happy, I'm so happy to have um, some Dark Phoenix backups. Now I don't know how dark phoenix these are gonna look because i've seen dark phoenixes come from seed batches and they honestly look nothing like a dark phoenix for me if you want a certain looking dark phoenix i recommend buying a clone rather than a seed because it's going to be very variable but i have high hopes i'm praying to the plant gods that this is going to look like a dark phoenix because my dark phoenix is just a bunch of chopped up stumps right now. It was being very, very bad, bad and naughty 
so I chopped it up. I didn't want to look at it anymore. Um, so I am happy to have some stumps that look like they're waking up now and two backups here. And then the last one I'm going to show you is my Zara Michelle. This one seems to be enjoying the sizing up because it was living in moss for a long time. I got it from my friend um, Anna and she was like, seriously, I have neglected that thing. I haven't done anything to it. It's so I've had it for so long. It's so small and it's just in moss. But as soon as I put it into like a substrate, it gave me this leaf here and then this one. Whereas like before, they were just kind of these little things. But I am actually so stinking excited about this because I love I love the Zara Michelle so much. I'm gonna throw in a photo of a really pretty Zara Michelle. Of course, it's gonna be variable. Just depending on the seed that you get from a batch, some of them end up kind of looking more just like a regular crystal, whereas some of them look very like red crystal and look very like Zara Michelle. I have high hopes that this one is gonna be very Zara Michelle looking. So uh, yeah, thank you Anna so much for this. I feel like this year has just been insane in terms of acquiring Ethereum that I just never in my wildest dreams thought would be in my house and I'm just so grateful. So, wow, that's all I have to say. So I'm gonna quickly go through my rehab list just so you kind of know who else is in my collection that I'm not showing you today. So the first on the rehab list is unfortunately my Anthurium Red Crystallinum. <sighs> I am not going to kill this one again. So I owned a red crystal before as a stump, killed that from Amanda. She sent another one that was a little bit bigger. It was seemingly doing okay, and then it just kept melting. Like, I don't know what it is. It just kept melting. It's doing it again where the leaves are melting. If I can remember, I think that Alice struggled with that plant a bit too in the very beginning. It took her a while to kind of get like some nice red crystal leaves. Like they were all, from what I can remember, either not emerging correctly or the leaves just like weren't fully formed. I don't know what the difference was, what she did, because I did see her red crystal yesterday and it looked fine. But I don't know if it's like a growing pain thing where it just needs some time to kind of like get a little bit bigger and then it, I don't know, starts to act right. But either way, have not had a lot of luck with the red crystal, but I'm gonna try so hard to rehab this thing because it is one of my favorite Ethereum of all time. And then the next one is my Nigro Laminum GG. <laughs> You know, I think I'm gonna hate the word or the name Gigi after my experience with the Nigro Lemon of Gigi. Bless Amanda's heart, she has sent me two or three now. I'm just so bad with them. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. Lauren grows hers like a beast and really is, it's kind of thriving on neglect and I just can't seem to figure it out. And it's getting to the point where I almost don't like that plant anymore. Like I look at it and I'm just like, I don't know. I'm not loving it. I, I, I don't know. I mean, look at it. It's not happy. She's just kind of like, you know, the new leaf came out. I was watering it, giving it plenty of light. It's living in my tent. And then it just freaking turned into a Rice Krispie. I don't know what's up with her. Um, and then again, my Dark Phoenix is on the mend. Well, not really on the mend. It's propagating right now in my last was it week of i showed a plant it was like a half leaf and i was like i don't know what this is i really don't no clue what it is i don't remember propagating anything it's my clarinervium i have a second clarinervium from lauren these were her seed grown clarinervium and they're so cute but um and it was growing actually pretty well to a certain point and then one day it was like i'm gonna go peace out and um it just tanked so I chopped it back down to a stump, grew one leaf in the tent, only half of it ended up forming. I don't know. So yeah, that Clarinervium is still in here. She's in the ICU. Uh, another one is my PAP5 Self from Amanda. I don't know, I, I feel like I'm having the same issues with this plant that I had with my um, RA5 Swamp where the leaves would just kind of turn yellow for seemingly no good reason. I don't know if it's because I'm not getting my pH right or maybe the fertilizer's all wrong. It's in a pot with drainage, the roots are healthy. Can't seem to quite understand it, but um, the issues that I'm having with it are 
it either not coming out of the caterpill completely, it rotting in the caterpill, or when the leaf does come out and fully emerges, emerges and hardens off, it just turns yellow. Don't know. So that one is also in the ICU. And then the last one is my Anthurium Twincia Velvet. I am so wary of this ID. I see nothing about it online. I cannot find jack crap about it online. Tropicals Plant has branded it as the Anthurium Twincia Velvet. So I bought this one from the last pop-up from Lauren. And um, I bought it because it reminded me so much of a Cunea Lentz. And I really, really want Acuna, but I am not, I'm not confident that where I get it from is going to be ethically sourced. <laughs> um, there was a whole like poaching thing about um, with the Kunas and I just don't want to contribute to that. So as much as I love it um, and have had the opportunity to buy it, I just don't feel great about it just yet. I would, I don't know. I just not gonna touch it okay not gonna touch it for now but the twinsia velvet is a pretty close second not quite but like almost has that same sort of like really really hairline venation kind of the same leaf shape the twinsia has a little bit more of like pronounced lobes and ears but pretty much the same exact leaf texture and the leaf color the reason why this is on the rehab list is because it's a new import and it hasn't been as smooth sailing as I thought it was gonna be. It kind of looks like the leaf is gonna go. I expected it to go. I always kind of expect my import leaves to drop, which is why when I buy imports, I'm not really looking at like the nicest leaf. I try and find plants that I like the characteristics of. So even if like even if a leaf looks like really beat up and just like gross, I'll try my best to look at the features of the leaf like do I like the leaf shape do I like the sinus blah 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 because if so I'm more likely to pick that one over another one that maybe looks a little different and is healthier and then I also look at the stem I want one that has like a nice chunky healthy stem one that is probable anyway this one I was fully expecting the leaf to fall off that's probably what's going to happen because it looks like crap right now but the stem is healthy and it is rooting finally and I think that I should have a leaf I'm gonna say in the next two months that's my guess so yeah those are all of them um hopefully I didn't miss any Ethereum. and you know what if I did who cares who freaking cares after three hours of filming actually yeah I think this is gonna be a three hour three hour long video maybe not three maybe like two and a half hours long so I hope you guys like Ethereum and I hope you're not sick of my voice already because I am sick of it and I want to be quiet now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Ethereum tour, Ethereum collection video. I am probably not going to do this again for a while. <laughs> Maybe next year. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I could do an entire Ethereum collection tour again. That was so exhausting. I don't know why that felt so exhausting, but I'm so tired. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope maybe you found some Ethereum that you want to add to your wish list. As a reminder, next week I'm going to be repotting a bunch of my Ethereum, ones that just need to be upsized, some that are rehabs. We're going to be kind of doing it all and just talking all about Ethereum. I'm going to talk to you guys about the substrates I'm using and the fertilizers. I'm gonna ask, answer some of your questions and we'll have a little chat about it. As a reminder, again, I am not the person to go to if you are looking to grow the healthiest, most amazing Anthurium because I am still learning about them myself. But there are certain things that I've learned over the years that I think I would love to share with you guys and so yeah we'll just chat about it next week and then i have a very small ethereum wish list um and we'll just quickly go through those and i'll pop in photos and maybe you guys might want to add those to your wish list too but for now i'm gonna get out of here thank you guys for sticking around Thank you for hanging out with me again on another Saturday. Hope you guys got some stuff done. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Let me know what Ethereum you got on your wish list. Maybe I can add some to my wish list video before the other video goes up. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.